welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and let's talk about the best removal spells in the format. Now, before I get to what I think is the best removal spells in the format, there is a lot to talk about here. I just didn't want to throw out a list. Hey, here's all the best removal spells in the format. As a guy who talks about removal a lot and how important it is in a deck, it's maybe surprising that I haven't made a video like this before. But there's so many nuances to it, and me just throwing out a list of the top 10 best removal spells in the format, I don't think is very helpful it's also completely subjective so I'm gonna first talk about what I think makes a good removal spell so that when I get to my top removal spells doesn't require a whole ton of explanation and obviously I also have to talk about what removal essentially is on this list I'm only talking about spot removal and removing permanence off the battlefield right there's lots of things that can be considered removal sometimes people might consider a counter spell as removal obviously board wipes are removal but that to me is probably going to be another list or another discussion Discussion. I'm only talking about spot removal here, and I'm only talking about the things that are going to get stuff off the battlefield, okay? Just a clarification there. Now, the reason why I have decided to finally make this video is because, again, I talk about removal a lot on my channel. I have made a couple videos with regards to what makes good removal, but in particular, I did my Orzov staples list recently, and I had about five or six comments on that video. Where's damn? How come you don't have that? It's such a great removal removal spell how come it's not on there and I answered a couple people but I can't answer everybody and it requires a little bit of explanation why I don't consider that a staple for me and Orzov and it plays into this whole idea of what this video is about so damn is black and a black sorcery destroy target creature a creature destroyed this way can't be regenerated and has overload to white white now right out of the gate I just thought this spell was okay when it came out in modern horizons 2 everyone was losing their minds about it and I thought it's okay I didn't think it was that great it's a good card. If someone plays this in a commander game, I'm not going to think it's weird or out of the ordinary. It is a really good card. For me, there's three reasons why I'm not going to be putting Dam in any of my commander decks, okay? Reason number one is Orzov, right? It's white and black, and white and black is the best color combination in the entire format for removal, as I just did my Orzov staples list. Talked about removal a lot because Orzov has a ton of great removal, way better than this in my opinion. Now, what's good about this card it is it modal, right? It has overload and those overload cards are always going to be great in the commander format except typically overload stuff is not going to affect your stuff and in this case it is right your overload essentially is just a wrath of god and i've talked about before that wrath of god is not a card that i probably would ever find room for in a commander deck because there's just so many better board wipes in my opinion depending on what strategy or what scenario you're playing and damn even though it is modal and it's giving you a couple of options it's suffering from the issue of not being super great at either of them even though it is doing two things it's doing target removal and it's being a board wipe it's doing both of those in my opinion not great right black and a black at sorcery speed to destroy target creature not great there's way better options in the commander format again especially in orzov colors to do that and again the wrath of god overload effect to me is just a worse version of a lot of other board wipes now the fact that it's only taking up one slot in your deck to do both of those things maybe that attracts people but at the same time you can only do either of them right you're you could either use this early in the game as a destroy creature effect. Now you're out of board wipe, right? You now have lost a board wipe in your deck because you've used your dam as targeted removal. So are you putting this in your deck as targeted removal or as a board wipe? Either way, you're going to be out the other one likely, right? So that to me really kind of complicates the issue. But really the main reason I don't like dam that much is because it's only dealing with creatures. That's it. Yes, it's a targeted removal or board wipe for creatures, but it's only dealing with creatures and again, in Orzov Colors, there's so much fantastic removal that is dealing with all permanents that I'm not going to be able to find room for Dam because I like dealing with all permanents. And that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video a lot. And I've talked about a bit on my channel already is being able to hit all permanents is so important or at least multiple permanents. I think people focus in a little bit too much on creature removal when it comes to their spot removal and even their board wipes. I talked about this in my Stifle versus Sword video and a lot of people would consider swords to be the best removal spell in the entire format which I think is bonkers it only hits creatures right it is probably the best spot removal creature spell in the history of the game sure but it only hits creatures and 
And so for me, I don't even know if Swords to Plowshares would make my top 10. I know, bonkers, right? I like to be able to hit more than one thing. I talked about this in my Swords versus Stifle video. You can check out that video. I go in depth about what the argument is there. I know it's a weird comparison, but what I was specifically talking about in that video is how many times is the game going to be on the line and a Stifle will save your butt more than a Swords will, right? And I talked about the two ways that I've died most in this format, Crater Hoof Behemoth and Aetherflux Reservoir. Those are the two cards that are most responsible for me losing the game, directly anyway. Swords to Plowshares does nothing against either of those. I mean, it does hit a Crater Hoof Behemoth, but once your Crater Hoof Behemoth hits the battlefield, Swordsing it isn't going to do anything except for gain your opponent five life. And again, maybe this plays into the rules thing a little bit because I can't believe how many people out there think that getting rid of the source of an ability gets rid of the ability. It does not. Once your Crater Hoof Behemoth hits the battlefield, someone swords it, your Crater Hoof Behemoth is gone and now it can attack, but the ability is still there. It will still resolve and all of your creatures still get the plus X, plus X and trample. So you can probably still kill your opponent. Swordsing that Crater Hoof Behemoth isn't going to do anything. Stifle, on the other hand, will fix this situation. The Crater Hoof Behemoth hits the battlefield. The ability goes on the stack and you can stifle it. And now your opponent just paid eight mana for a five, five creature with haste, which is horrible. So Stifle is a way better card in that situation for what I consider to be probably one of the most popular win cons in the entire format, right? Aetherflux Reservoir, again, obviously Swords does nothing there because it's not a creature. Stifle, on the other hand, not only saves your life, but is a double whammy because your opponent has to pay the life. And again, this might get into a rules situation. Stifling an Aetherflux Reservoir doesn't mean your opponent doesn't have to pay the life, right? Any activation cost is already paid once that ability goes on the stack and stifling it just mean it doesn't resolve. They still paid the 50 life. I had a guy comment on that video that said, well, stifling an Aetherflux Reservoir doesn't really mean much because they can just activate the ability again. Well, I hope they have a whole bunch of life, right? Like more than a hundred because the first time they paid that activation, they lost 50 life, right? They had to pay the 50. So now they're out 50 life. I've stifled the ability. Do they have more than 50 life to do it again, right? Because that 50 life is now gone. So that's why the stifling of an Aetherflux Reservoir is extra good because your opponent still has to pay the 50 life, right? Am I saying that Stifle is better than Swords in a Commander format? No, not necessarily. I would probably put a Swords in, say, my Azorius deck over a Stifle. I still think Stifle is really good and underrated in the format. It can really save your life in a lot of situations. I won't talk about it anymore. You can go check out that video. The main point here is that in a Commander game, just being able to remove creatures is not that great when it comes to your spot removal, in my opinion. I want to hit more than one thing. Rip Apart, for me, is one of my favorites. I know it's not an instant, and it is really important to have your removal at instant speed. Again, another knock against Dam, because you never know what your opponents are going to do. They're comboing off, they're doing something on your turn, and if you're sitting there with a sorcery in your hand, it's not going to be as effective. However, I still really, really like Rip Apart, because it's hitting four different things. You can get that troublesome artifact or enchantment off the table, you can get that creature off the table if it has toughness or three or less, or you can even get a Planeswalker off the table, and having a card in your deck, remember this is a singleton format and we want lots of options in our 99 card deck and having a card in there that is going to hit four different permanents even if it is sorcery speed is really really valuable to you. So if I'm talking about the best removal in the format and I'm going to give you my actual top five and you will see a trend here with the top five coming in at number five is Chaos Warp and I'm sure everyone's seen it before it's two in a red instant the owner of target permanent shuffles it into their library then reveals the top card of their library if it's a permanent card they put it onto the battlefield instant speed and of course everything on this top five list is going to be instant speed because that is pretty important when it comes to being the best removal being able to react to whatever your opponent might be doing they're about to win the game do you have an answer and of course this is and it hits any permanent and a lot of people would probably put this higher on the list actually for me it's number five because i don't love that your opponent might flip over something that's actually even better than what you shuffled in and also they can flip over the same thing right and i've seen that happen a couple of times where you chaos warp their blightsteel colossus into their library they shuffle up and then they flip their blightsteel colossus over again that kind of sucks your opponent almost certainly will get something off of this i mean i would say it's like a 70 percent chance or something that your opponent will get something usually like a land it's a pretty good chance that your opponent is going to flip something off the top but in a pinch saving your life and being able to most importantly hit any permanent is super super important here this even hits lands and we all know there are some super powerful lands in the format that your opponent will just not
not necessarily win right away, but completely take over the game if you can't get them off the battlefield. Now, that being said, we're going to move on to my number four spot removal spell, which is Anguished Unmaking, one, a white and a black, instant, exile, target, non-land, permanent, you lose three life. So this one is not going to hit lands, and Orzov, despite the fact that it is fantastic at removal, the one little bit of a drawback is it has a tough time hitting lands a lot of the time. That's fine. Can't be good at everything, right? This is the reason why I probably wouldn't put this a little higher on the list. For me, it's number four because it's not hitting lands. It is hitting everything else, but once in a while, you are going to have that really troublesome land that you want to get off the field, and that can be a bit of a drawback, but three mana, instant speed, hit any non-land permanent, and of course, exile is really, really important as well. That's why I had to include this on this list. This is actually the only one on the list that is exiling. Exiling can be really, really important to get rid of those indestructible permanents or get rid of things permanently. You don't want your opponent getting them back out of the graveyard or possibly getting them back out of their library. Getting things out of exile is not impossible, but it is really, really difficult. So exile has a finality to it that I really, really like. That's why this guy's number four on the list. Coming in at number three, Assassin's Trophy. Black and a green instant. Destroy target permanent opponent controls. Its controller may search the library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. So the they get to go get a basic land is almost nothing. Again, that's why I prefer Path to Exile over Swords to Plowshares. Personally, a lot of decks sometimes won't even have the basic land, which is funny. When you Path or Assassin's Trophy your opponent's stuff and they don't have the basic land to get, now there's no drawback to your spell at all, which makes it even better. So the basic land thing here is almost nothing. And again, destroy target permanent for two mana at instant speed is incredible. Lands included, all right? Again, this hits everything. Nothing is without a reach of this. It is destroy, so it doesn't have the exile. But other than that, there is almost nothing bad about this card. The reason I have it at number three, though, and again, a lot of people might put this at number one, is because it's black and green. It's two colors, so that is very much going to limit the amount of decks it can go into, right? And we all know this format is color specific. Color actually really matters here. So for me, I'm going to move things up the list a little bit higher that are less colors that are more likely going to be seen in decks because you're not limited on color combination. You could easily make the argument that this is the best removal spell in the format, but for me, it comes in at number three simply because it is a two color spell and just can't go in as many decks. And coming in at number two and number one is Generous Gift and Beast Within respectively. And I'm cheating a little bit here because these spells are essentially the same, but they're not actually the same. And I have Generous Gift at number two, and I have Beast Within at number one for a very specific reason, again, because of the color. And I think Beast Within is more important in the format because it is green. Of course, the only difference being here is that you're giving your opponent a different kind of token, but it's still a 3-3 and it's still green. Three mana, instant speed, destroy any permanent is exactly what you want for your removal in a commander game. Giving them a 3-3 token is nothing. Again, the only reason why I rank Generous Gift at two is because white has such fantastic removal that you're not as reliant on it. That to me is just the slight difference between the two. Beast Within is incredibly important in a mono green deck because it can deal with creatures, which green doesn't do very well. It also is important in any other combination of colors with green that doesn't have white for the same reasons, right? So for me, Beast Within gets the slight bump to number one just because it's green and white doesn't need the removal as badly as green does, even though they are essentially the same card. But without a doubt, these to me are the best removal spells in the entire format. Being able to hit any permanent at instant speed is exactly what you want in a commander game because you never know what your opponents are doing. Maybe they have that glacial chasm and you can't attack them and they just keep recycling it and you can't break the lock. This will solve that problem. Maybe they have that really troublesome planeswalker on the table that they're about to emblem and you can get that off the table. Maybe they got that isochron scepter and they're comboing off. We can hit that. Maybe they just have a Heuristic Study, really powerful card in the format, you can get that off the table. Whatever your opponent is doing, these two cards are going to save your butt almost every single time. They go in every white and or green deck that I am building. And of course, anything on this top five list is going to go in any of those decks of those colors that I am building because of course, I think they're the best removal spells in the format. So this video again, wasn't just about, hey, here's the best removal spells in the format because I don't think that's very useful. It was more about the discussion and I'm trying to get people thinking. How often do you lose games because of something other than a creature? People just really focus in on creatures a little bit too much when it comes to removal. Think of the last five games you played. What was the card that was really losing you the game there? Was it that Ristic Study that was drawing your opponent a ton of cards? Was it that Smothering Tide that was giving your opponent a 
ton of treasure tokens? Was it that maze of ith so that you couldn't attack with your commander? Was it that graveyard hate card that was locking you out of the game because you're playing a graveyard deck? How often are you losing a commander game because of a permanent that is not a creature? I think you'll find that more often than not, that is the case. But that is all. That is essentially my diatribe about what I think makes good removal and then my top five removal spells in the format. I think it was finally time that I actually made a video like this so that moving forward when I talk about removal, I can at least point to it and say, hey, go check that video out and you can see my opinions on the matter. Let me know how I'm wrong in the comments below and all you big fans of damn out there, you can tell me why you love that card so much. It's a good card. I'm not saying it's not. Obviously, Swords of the Plowshares is a fantastic card as well. I'm not saying you shouldn't play them. I like to make videos like this to sort of make people think about, hey, maybe I should try something else. Just try it out. See how it works for you. Let me know what you think is the best removal spell in the format that I might have missed on this list. I can't imagine what it possibly could be. But if you can think of something, let me know. But that is it for today. And thanks for tuning in.